Today we're going to take a look at creating this procedural grate texture. As with some of my other videos, I tried to balance this with being realistic, but also being an approachable, not too difficult project for people to make. This can take many different forms, as you can see, you can change it around quite a bit and uh, really personalize it. So let's see how I did that. Let's start by sizing our cube on the z-axis by a factor of 0.2. So we hit S, Z, and 0.2 just like that, and then hit Enter. And then hit Control A and apply that scale. Let's come over here to the Modifiers panel and add a bevel modifier. Let's bump the segments up to 5, just like that. And then let's enable smooth shading. Somebody on my YouTube channel suggested that I shrink this side of the screen here just to make the shader editor a little bit bigger. But I'm going to try something different I saw somebody else do, and uh, that's just make this top right into my 3D viewport, and then I can just look at the, my object up here, and then this makes this whole window my shader editor, so it's a little bit bigger. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and hit N to get rid of that shelf there. Let's go ahead and hit New and create a new material here. We'll call it Great, just like that. This idea actually came from watching one of Default Cube's videos, it was the video on how to make a procedural pylon, and I just kind of expanded on some ideas I had after watching that, that video there. So I'm going to bring in a texture coordinate and make sure it's coming out of object and bring in a separate XYZ note there and just plug it right after that. And then we'll bring in a few math notes here, three to be exact, and just place those all right here. Make sure those are both going into add. Make sure Y is going into that bottom one there. We're going to change this top one to power and this bottom one to power and leave that third one as add. Let's change these both to 2. We can see a circle there, but I'm going to change this top exponent to 4. We can see more of the shape I'm going for with that metal grating there. This next part I got from watching another YouTuber. His name is Aaron Dale. He's got some excellent stuff on procedural nodes on his channel. It's a little more complicated than my stuff, but definitely check it out if you're interested. Uh, but this is a very nice little setup to control the fall off using two mix RGB nodes. I'm going to just place them on there. This first one I'm going to change to color burn, and the second one I'm going to change to color dodge. And I remember that order because B is before D in the alphabet, so color burn is before color dodge in the setup. And this second value, we're going to change this to white. The second value, let's change it to almost white, but just a little bit gray there. And so this factor on this first one controls the size, and the factor on the second one controls the fall off. So we can make it perfectly sharp there, or just about sharp. It's kind of nice. You have a lot more control this way. So I really like this setup. We could change these around as much as we want. Let's not worry about it too much. Let's just set it something around here and uh, we can tweak that later. So what we want to do next is we want to make our shape a little bit smaller. It's kind of taken up a large part of this object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this power and change it to multiply. Let's change this to 5. And let's duplicate this multiply and put it on the Y there as well. We can see our shape is much smaller in the middle of our object now. And now what I'd like to do is offset it. So let's take an add here and let's change this to maybe negative 0.1. Let's try that out. Let's just put that on the Y as well. So we can see now it's a little off center. Why don't we just change this to a negative 1 or 0.12 and negative 0.8 just or 0 0.08, pardon me just like that. That looks pretty good. And then what we want to do is bring two more nodes in here that basically mirror it, which are going to be absolute value nodes. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to absolute, duplicate that, and put it right here. And now we can see we've got four of our original object. And we can change these around by moving this slider here. You know, have as, as much of a customization as we want. Same with this one here. Move those back and forth. Change those back. And uh, let's try that one more time. What we can do actually is just go ahead and duplicate this add here and multiply this by 2 right in this field. Let's do the same thing with this one here. Bring it in, multiply, oops, that's the wrong one. Bring that off. Bring this add in here and multiply it by 2 right in this field. Let's go ahead and bring this absolute and go ahead and pop that in there. Let's do that one more time. Bring in this add, multiply this by 2 and bring in this add, multiply this by 2, and then pop these absolute values in there. So now we can see our grate is taking shape. So the first thing I'm going to do is come over to the color burn and turn this down a little bit to 0 0.01. 
and uh, that gives me a bit more gradient to play with here because I want some depth to this grading texture I don't want it to just be kind of some 2D thing with some transparency there so then what I'm going to do is bring in a color ramp and this is going to be one of our masks here to uh, basically use as a factor between a transparent and a principled shader here so we're going to leave the black at zero and bring the white way down we're going to put it down to like 0 0.07 just like that and we can see uh, it's really brought the white in there so let's bring in a mix shader and place it right here make sure this is going into the factor let's bring in a transparent shader and plug that into the top socket and then bring in a principled shader and plug it into the bottom there just like this let's see what that looks like uh, not like too much yet because we have to do one more step over here at the material properties you have to come over here to blend mode and let's go ahead and change this to alpha clip I think it's going to be good any of those alpha ones will work they're all a little different but they're all kind of similar at the same time and now we can see some transparency in our object where those black shapes were now let's move this over give us some more room and I'm going to bring in another color ramp here let's go ahead and pop this right here after the color dodge again and let's go ahead and do the same thing we did pretty much we're going to move this white value way down let's go to 0.17 and see what that looks like click on it we can see now we've got a bit more gradient this time though if you look at the top image there's less gradient so just a bit more gradient here and I want to bring in a bump node it's not how you spell bump we go let's put that there instead of plugging into the normal we're gonna plug it into the height and you see what that looks like we've got this color information now showing us this little 3d effect so that this grate has a bit of depth if we move this up and down we can make that bigger or smaller it's totally you know personalized choice uh, let's set it at 0.15 that looks pretty good Then we're gonna plug this normal into the normal on the principled BDSF and let's take a look at what this mix shader looks like now yeah it looks pretty cool we got that 3d effect now it looks a lot better already kind of looks like a cheese grater almost but uh, you can make it look like a lot of different things so up next I'd like to add some surface imperfections uh, let's go ahead and bring in a Voronoi texture and do this one Voronoi setup I've done a few times where we change this to Minkowski duplicate it and change the bottom one to F2 and then mix them together and change this mis mix uh, to subtract um, there we go let's take a look at what that looks like yeah not too much yet let's bring in a color ramp as well just put it here so we can control that and let's go ahead and click on one of those four noise and hit control T and it'll bring up our texture coordinate and mapping nodes make sure this is coming out of object here and plug this vector into the bottom four noise texture again there as well and then let's go ahead and bring in the white value and the black value uh, just adjust this until we like what we're looking at I'm gonna actually bring the black value above the white one at 0.45 and then bring this white one down a little bit at 0.255 just like this and then let's go ahead and distort this whole thing on the vector line as well with a noise texture just bring this in pop it right here and let's go ahead not duplicate that let's bring in a mix RGB so we can control how much influence this texture has and run it object into color 2 let's set this to like 0.8 like this here then let's come down here and turn out the scales on these four noise. Let's do both of them at 10. Then let's come over here to the subtract and let's turn this up a little bit here just to make this more subtle. Uh, 0.8 looks pretty good. I like the look of that. We could always change it if we wanted, but I'm um, pretty happy with that so far. So we're going to do a few more things here. Let's go ahead and make this bump map a little more complicated by bringing in this uh, color ramps influence as well. We'll feed this into the height we'll feed this into the normal right here so we can see what these both these normals look like combined here in the preview in the top right once it loads in there we go and I'm gonna decrease the one normal map uh, this first one here let's turn it down to point one that looks a little bit better um, we can always change that but it looks pretty good and then let's take a look at this mix shader overall here okay looking pretty good go ahead and make sure as well if metallic isn't turned up make sure to turn it up to one I had uh, turned it up to one already just make sure you do that and then let's go ahead and bring in a mix RGB here and we're gonna run color uh, this color ramp here into color one and this color ramp here into color two and we're gonna change this to multiply 
and set this factor to 1. And so now we've kind of got this one pattern coming through here. You'll see it when it loads in. We're going to feed this into another color ramp just for our base color here, just like this, and run this right into our base color. We're not going to make this one super complicated. We're just going to do two colors here. This bottom one, I set this as kind of a rust color. Um, you know, I was just thinking something kind of subtle like uh, this here looked pretty good. Um, you know, you can change it however you want. And then this one here, I did it slightly bluish tint, not by much, um, just like that there. Let's see what that looks like on our final product. So I'm just looking at this here. Um, I'm going to turn up this value on the color ramp from 0.45 to 0.85. It just makes these scratches a little bit more subtle, and I like the look of that a bit better. And uh, maybe let's move this up here a little bit to like 0 0.4. I think that looks pretty good. And lastly, let's run from this color map right into this roughness here. So we have a little bit more variability on our roughness there, where those scratches are. It's not quite as smooth. So why don't we try and make this a little bit more complex. Let's come down here and change um, a little bit of stuff here. Why don't we take off this mapping node. and Let's change this bottom value to 1.3. Let's see what we get. just this here, maybe like this. And let's go ahead and uh, make another level of these guys here as well. Just bring in that add, multiply it by two, and do the same thing to the X as well. I should have probably just put it on solid view just because it's going to take a second to load in here. Let's do that. Solid view. Let's duplicate this add and uh, multiply this by two, and then bring in two more absolute values here. It's still taking a second even though I'm not in rendered mode. Holy cow. And bring two more absolute values over here just like this. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. You know, um, this is uh, kind of a neat texture. I think you could use this in a lot of different places. And of course, you can always play around with it too. Maybe expand this a little bit, um, go like this, and uh, make these parts in the middle, uh, something like this. Uh, really be creative with these settings, and you can come up with some pretty cool things. So, yeah, don't be afraid to experiment. For the last little part here, let's take a look at how to create some kind of pattern like this that just repeats forever. This is actually from another YouTuber called tutor for You, and uh, I watched one of his videos which he explained this. So this is essentially his setup. But I'm going to bring in a texture coordinate node. We're going to come out of generated here. Let's go ahead and load that in. Let's go ahead and bring in what's called a vector transform node. And just put it right here. And we're going to change the top setting to object and the bottom setting to world. And then we're going to go ahead and bring in a separate XYZ there and a combine XYZ. Just put it right here. And we're going to run Y into Y as well. We're going to bring in two math notes here. Uh, I'm going to change it to modulo first and just change this bottom value to 1. We're going to pop this on the X and the Y there. Just move them apart a tiny bit. And then let's go ahead and bring in a mapping node put it here and uh, we're going to need that in a second here but we're um, not going to change it for now. Another separate XYZ and this is going to be our shape here. I'm just going to make a simple circle for now with two power nodes set to squared just like this here and then bring in another node and just change it to add. So we're going to add that together. Um, the problem here is we just need to change this to texture and change these values to 0 0.5 right here and now we've got our circle. And we can see if I click on it and size it up it actually starts repeating the texture. I'm going to zoom out here for a second. But basically it goes on forever. So if we were to change some of these settings we could change our shape here. Why don't we change this to 4 on the top and then if we size this up we can see we get something more similar to our grading texture. So you could try the same thing with this here but we try it with that other setup to uh, create something that you know works a little bit differently it still has its limitations, but it's neat to know how you can do it a couple different ways. Just for good measure, why don't we take a look at one more way that we might create this uh, this gray texture here. This is just another way that, um, actually I, I got again from Aaron Dale, a uh, great channel. Um, 
So uh, what I'm going to do is run the texture coordinate running out of object there. And I'm going to bring in a vector math node here and change this to scale. And what this does is it basically multiplies every spot on this coordinate system by this value. If I set this to 5, instead of going from 0 to 1, it's now going from 0 all the way to 5 at the end of the object there. If I duplicate this here and change this to fraction, then we can see we have this basically, each quarter of this is divided into 5, 5, 5. So uh, yeah, we've got a lot more sections here. And then what we could do is we could take our separate x, y, z, and then from here make uh, you know a circle or or whatever kind of uh, shape here. So let's let's change these to power. I'm going to change this top value to two for now, and this bottom one let's change it to power and two for the exponent. And then run y into the base, duplicate this power node, change this to add, and add these together. And then let's duplicate this one more time and change this to uh, square root. So now um, we've got those circles, but they're just in the corner here, so we need to move these circles into the center of each of our little uh, grids there. And uh, the easiest way is with a mapping node. So pop that in right after these vector math nodes and change this to texture. And then we're going to change the x and the y value to 0.5, just like that. And now we can see our circles are in the middle again. So, you know, three different ways to do the same kind of thing. If we change this to 4, we've got that kind of great texture. We can do the color burn, color dodge set up here, do our masks, whatever. But uh, three different ways to uh, make the same kind of texture. So I hope you're able to follow all that and hope you can see how you can change it around. And thanks for watching.